Hi guys, and welcome to our monthly marketing webinar. Thank you all for joining us. Today we have fabulous Lindsay Dare here. She is our Director of Content Operations and a total master when it comes to how to write for an online world. Um, her strategy includes not just how to attract search engines, but also how to please all of your users, which is critically important for creating effective content. So. Without further ado, I'm going to hand the floor over to you, Lindsay. Hi, everyone, and thanks, Molly, for having me today. Um, as Molly said, we'll be discussing how to write for an online world, and I'll be walking you through what search engines want from your content, how to create a content-focused marketing strategy, and how to create content that satisfies the needs of your clients and potential clients. We know that content planning, creation, and execution can be a pretty daunting task, and we hope that we can provide you with some tips and tricks that will help you get a jump start on writing well-performing content with a purpose. So with that, we'll get started. Interrupt you for one second. Sorry. If you guys have questions, go ahead and stick them in the question box, and I will uh, get back to you, or we will read them aloud if they are pertinent to everyone, just to give you guys a heads up. Sorry. Go ahead, Lindsay. No problem. So first we'll start with what search engines want from your content. We all know that in order to get the types of clients you want, you need to make sure your website delivers what Google is looking for. But the big question is, what are the search engines looking for? They're really looking for content that's useful and informative. Your page should really answer the question or topic of the search. It should be informative and shouldn't stray from the main topic. Um, your content should be more valuable and useful than other sites. If you're writing about getting a DUI, you want to make sure your article provides more value or a different perspective than the numerous articles on the web about getting a DUI. For example, instead of just writing about calling a lawyer after getting a DUI, you want to explain the possible penalties and possible defenses. Um, you want your content to be credible. This will show your site's credibility by using original search, citations, links, reviews, and testimonials. You also want your content to be high quality. It should be unique, specific, and you want to keep in mind that your content should really be created primarily to get visitors a good user experience, not to rank well in the search engines. It shouldn't be mass produced or outsourced to a large number of other sites. And lastly, you want your content to be engaging. You want to engage your visitors by interacting with them through regular updates um, and by using videos and images within your content. Now we're going to walk through how to create a content-focused marketing strategy. But first, we need to discuss what a content strategy is. The Content Strategy Alliance defines content strategy as getting the right content to the right user at the right time through strategic planning of content creation, delivery, and governance. I realize that's a mouthful and it sounds a bit overwhelming, but as I said before, hopefully we can walk through it and break it down into smaller pieces to make it an easier goal for you to reach. Um, your content strategy will outline how and why your content will be created and managed. It doesn't have to be overly complicated, but you should be sure you take some time to identify your perfect client or patient. Define the goals for the content you write. For example, increase brand awareness, drive traffic to your site, generate leads, convert leads into clients, improve retention, and drive referrals. Those are a few options for goal setting. Um, you want to develop a list of topics that are important to your perfect client. You want to think about what types of content you should develop to reach your preferred clients. And finally, you want to document your strategy. <clears throat> so now let's take a look at the individual components of your marketing strategy. First, you want to identify your perfect client or patient. Businesses often make one of two mistakes when it comes to their clients. They either pay too little attention and risk losing them, or they work too hard at trying to keep the wrong ones. The key here is to learn about the clients that matter most to your business and be sure that they're happy. It's important to note that casting a wide net with regard to your to who your firm considers a perfect client can be counterproductive. Describing your ideal client as anyone injured in a car accident is too broad. So by narrowing down this target group, you can allow your focus to be on only your best clients. That's a Think great about point. The Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was saying that's a great point because also that gives you the option to target more specific keywords. If you are casting too wide a net and you're just saying car accident injury, car accident injury, and every other piece of content, you don't have the option to say that, you know, spinal disc 
gnosis or whatever the word is that I just made up. <laughs> that you have more options for specific keyword targeting if you are more specific about the, the client that you are identifying. Exactly. So to do that, you want to consider the legal matters that you enjoy handling and identify the unique traits of each of those cases as compared to matters which are less ideal to you. So to help you narrow down your focus and identify your perfect client for patient, you want to ask yourself the following question. Which practice area did their case fall under? What issues were presented? Were they able to pay without question? Was it easy to collect payment from them? Did they follow your advice? Did they refer clients of the same caliber to you? And what demographic did they fall under? All of this will help you narrow your focus so you can be sure you're targeting the right groups, which will really, in turn, just make your, your focus and, and the cases that you're bringing in really benefit you, they'll be more geared toward exactly the types of cases you're looking for. The second, you want to be sure that each piece you write is written with purpose. You don't ever really want to create content for the sake of creating content. At the end of the day, it just adds confusion to your site and you'll spend more time cleaning it up than you will writing and targeting the people that you want to target. So anytime you write a piece, you want to be sure you're addressing one or more of these items. So increasing awareness of your law firm or medical practice. It includes interesting social media posts about what your firm is doing or things going on in your area related to your business. You want to drive traffic to your website. For example, informative blog posts you share on social media can drive readers back to your site. Um, if you want to generate leads, getting readers to fill out a form or download your free book on your website. That gives you their information so you can stay in contact with them and remind them that you are here for them to help with their issue. Um, your goal could be converting leads into clients, and this can be done through case results and testimonials. Um, just really driving home the point that you are there for them and that you do great work. Um, if you want to improve client retention, you could use a monthly or quarterly newsletter providing tips to your existing clients just to keep them in the loop with what's going on in your firm. Um, and to generate referrals, you could use newsletters again. Um, you may have worked with the client and resolved their issue, but if they keep getting your newsletter, you'll remain top of mind for them and they could refer a friend or family member to you. So, <clears throat> third, you really want to develop a list of content topics that you can use to sort of outline what you're going to be writing for your website. So. Some of the best places to mine for topics that we've found are your own areas of practice, your clients and potential clients, questions they ask you, um, your success stories, what your competitors have going on, firm news, trade journals, and professional organizations, government websites. Um, you can also use reputable nonprofit organizations like NHTSA, FMCSA, AAA, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and medical websites like the Mayo Clinic or Cleveland Clinic. These are really places that we do a lot of research because at the end of the day, you want to provide your readers with really great information that they can, that help them understand the process they're going through. <clears throat> you can also use seasons and holidays as a great source for topics and federal, state, and local news. You want to remember that your clients aren't experts in their field, so try to think of your content as an educational tool for them. So when you're writing, you want to try to step into their shoes and, and remember what they may or may not know and make sure that you really explain it well. Um, it can be helpful to sketch out a brief outline of the most important things people should know about each of your areas of practice. For example, for a car, if you're a car accident attorney, your topics include um, what to do after a car accident, how long do you have to file a case, the attorney fee structure, give them an idea of what the legal process is like, um, you can talk about the types of accidents or types of injuries that are sustained from those accidents. Topics for a podiatrist writing about plantar fasciitis could include what to bring to your appointment, what insurance you accept, what causes plantar fasciitis, um, exercise and physical therapy used to help with the problem, surgery, and even how long it takes to heal. All of these so topics are, are going to ultimately help you guys avoid 
kind of repeating yourselves and answering those questions over and over again if you provide the information up front before they start asking the questions. So it is helpful right. for you as well as the client or patient. Absolutely. It kind of gives you a guideline and you, a structure so you know what you've already written. And if laws or anything has changed, then you know that you've written that piece. You can go back and update it opposed to adding another piece about it, which would then lead to confusion because you have conflicting pieces. So after you kind of outline your topic ideas, you really want to determine your vehicle for delivery. So these include library articles, blogs, FAQs or frequently asked questions, case results, ebooks and reports, drip campaigns, and email newsletters. So I'm going to walk you through each of these types to give you a better understanding of what you should be writing and how these pieces can help you. So first we'll start with library articles. Library articles really provide readers with evergreen content. That's content that's relevant to your business, it fairly changes over time, so it's always relevant to your readers. You don't have to worry about it going stale on your site or needing constant updates. It also, you can also zero in on specific aspects of a practice area. So library articles really should serve as foundational pieces that provide informed and well-developed facts ideas or opinions on subjects relevant to your practice areas. And for the tone of these pieces, you really want it to be professional and educational. You want to provide the reader with detailed, well-researched information. And when you're writing a library article, here are a few things that we like to keep in mind. Um, is the information useful to your reader? Is it clear? Did you properly outline your thoughts? And you want to be sure that your tone is friendly, approachable, and loaded with solid advice. Of course, for most practice areas, there's a ton of information that you can share. So to help you get started, um, put together just a few examples of some library article topic ideas, like how we determine the value of a serious car accident case, types of surgical errors and how to protect yourself, key elements necessary to prove fault in product liability cases, and even how the car accident claims process works. So as I said, these are just some examples, but I, hopefully you'll be able to take these and really start to get an idea for the types of well-written articles that we typically like to see for library articles. Next, we'll cover blogs, and they really cover almost any topic related to your business, from news to tips to changing laws and policies. With blogs, you can use a list format, recount a news story or offer other quick thoughts on a topic. It's really up to you. Blogs are where your personality should shine through. Um, the main purpose of writing them is to deliver high-level information without getting too detailed or being overly formal. The tone for these pieces should be helpful, educational, and intriguing. And in some cases, you can even be laid back and witty. Like I said, it's always, a, this is really a place for you to let your personality shine through. Because it makes you approachable to your reader and it can really be the starting point for a great relationship building. By letting them see who you are and not just being another attorney based on a website, you can really grip them and it would draw them to you opposed to going somewhere else because they feel like they know you, the real you, not just the picture of you on a website, if you know what I mean. Um, blog posts allow for a lot more creativity, but you still want to make sure your writing is relevant to your readers. So. Again, I'm going to give you some examples of some good blog topic ideas. Three vital questions to ask after a car accident, four tips for preventing texting and driving accidents, and the debate in Texas over distracted driving laws. And like I said, um, these really can be more opinion pieces. So if you want to put in, write about how you feel about the three vital questions to ask after a car accident, use what you think. I wouldn't add really go around and see what other attorneys are doing, but what do you specifically think? What's the advice that you give to your clients when they come in? So next we have frequently asked questions or FAQs, and they really provide readers with answers to the most common questions surrounding your industry, firm, or practice area. And by answering the questions your clients are asking on a frequent basis, you can establish yourself as an authority on the subject and in turn you gain the trust of your readers, because that's what this is all about. Gaining trust, helping them understand that you really know what you're talking about, and that they can trust your resources and your content. 
And this is another way that you can really focus on those long-tailed keywords. I, when I, I know everybody has their own search method, but when I search for things, I literally will type a question in. So I would literally type in, how long do I have to file a motorcycle accident case if that's something I were looking for? So that's a really good way to target those longer-tailed keywords. Right. And by putting these answers to the common questions you get, excuse me, in writing, you're really saving yourself a lot of time because you can direct your potential clients or clients to your website to find the answers to these questions. Um, in order for FAQs to be effective, they need to be accurate, concise, easy to read, and relatable to your audience. They're a great way to provide readers with an abundance of information in a meaningful way. Um, and again, they provide readers with quick access to information relevant to a problem they're facing or just general questions they have about that area of law. So some examples for FAQ topic ideas would be, why should I hire an attorney to handle my case? Can I handle it alone? Um, how much does it cost to hire an attorney? And we all know that that's a pretty big question in the minds of most people that come in. Um, how long do I have to file a car accident lawsuit in California? And how much is my case worth? The case results, and this is a favorite of ours at Foster Web Marketing. Um, we love it when clients write great case results. We see really good results on, in terms of site performance um, and generating leads from the case results that our clients write or that we help them write. Um, and on the screen, you'll see an example of a case result for one of our clients that really does dig in and give a, lot, a great amount of detail. Um, Case results really highlight your expertise by showing the types of real life problems your clients face and how you solve those problems. Because at the end of the day, we want clients or potential clients to understand how we handle the problems and help them kind of relate to it if they're in a similar situation. So case results are powerful and unique content. They stand out from and even support your other content. Stories of real individuals in real life situations are far more memorable than a rundown of dry facts or warnings, but they still carry the same messages and bring those messages to life. I'm sure you see a lot online right now about storytelling within content marketing, and this is a great place to use that. You want to reflect on the case and kind of really tell the story, explain what happened to the person and how you helped them and what were their emotions, what were your emotions as you were working through the case. When you tell compelling case stories, you build trust by personalizing and humanizing the work you do. Your empathy and expertise will shine through as you explain what happened to the clients or patients and how you were there for them. They speak directly to potential clients and referral sources and show your clients that your clients are in good hands. Really, to sum it up, they do a lot to convert contacts into clients. This is also a good and opportunity, sorry, for the podiatrist to do kind of the before and after of this is what the patient came in with, this is what they were suffering from, and how that really impacts their daily life because that's something that when you've got an injury or when you're dealing with something that's uncomfortable or painful or interrupting your day-to-day, -day, that can be so frustrating. And if your patients, if your prospective patients are looking for information on that and they see that, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, yes, I totally relate to what they're saying. That's what I'm dealing with. I can barely get out of bed in the morning because it hurts so bad to stand up. You know, all that stuff. They can really relate to what you're saying. And once you have a before and after, it's going to be very compelling for them to see, okay, I can get better. I just need to seek the right treatment. Exactly. And beyond the benefits of trust and relationship building and really helping your client identify with you and in the case story. Um, using case stories is really good for SEO. They help you attract more qualified leads and convert more visitors because they are so easy to identify with. Um, it's not content that's loaded with generic keywords. It really, case stories really generate a, a great mix of organic keywords that can bring in similar kinds of cases, which is what everyone's looking for. Um, but when you're writing them, you want to be sure you choose the right cases to highlight. Um, you want to think about the kinds of cases you already handle and the kinds of cases you're trying to attract, and then use it as a guide to choose a few cases where you obtain an excellent outcome for the client and tell these stories. When writing, you want to be sure to explain what happened, um, what injuries or issues were involved, how your client was affected, 
What prompted them to reach out to you for help? Um, why did they choose you? How were you able to help them in the outcome of the case? Uh, you want to be sure you have specific details that help tell the story and make sure you confirm the use of any personal information with your client. Um, you certainly don't want to post all their information only to find out that they would really prefer not to have it. That could lead to some bad reviews or something like that. So just make sure that you check with them and if they would prefer not to use um, the award amount or their name or anything like that, you can mark it as confidential. It's really okay to avoid the use of their names or any other identifying information. You're still telling the story. Um, if they are comfortable with you sharing their information, it can be a great time to get testimonials from them, which you could then link to your case results. So it pulls the whole story together. So they see your side of it, and then they also see a positive testimonial from the client you helped. So some <clears throat> good ideas uh, for case results could be a pedestrian hit by a drunk driver compensated for injuries, man walks without pain after hammer toe surgery, hearing aid allows a woman to enjoy time with her family, um, woman receives $1.2 million for head-on collision. And as you see, it's not always about the dollar amount. It could be just that someone's life was improved after the work you did. So you don't have to really get caught up in sharing the case amount or anything like that if, you, if you're uncomfortable or the client is. Or if you just, if it wasn't something that generated um, a recovery, you still helped improve their life. So the next <clears throat> kind of content that we like to talk about and like to get our clients to write are ebooks and reports. So a great book or report answers your perfect client's questions. It explains the solution to a problem and provides some type of benefit to the person reading it. So when you're thinking about books and reports, think about what's important to your perfect clients again, as well as their interests. Anyone can write a book or report. You want to be sure that your standout is something that your ideal client would enjoy. Um, this is a great way to differentiate yourself. Again, um, as I said, anybody can write a book or report, but they can't write it from your perspective. And they also don't know what your perfect clients and patients are asking for. So you want to make sure that you're really targeting that specific group instead of writing it just from a, a broad subject that covers everyone. Um, books and reports also build credibility, authority, and trust. They can bring in more targeted traffic and potential clients. Also allows you to gather contact information and follow up with your audience. When they come to your site and complete the form, you then to download the book, you then have their contact information and you can stay in touch with them. Um, they can prepare your potential clients for their first meeting with you, and you can also debunk common myths and ease your potential client's fears. Um, all of these help establish you as an expert and build relationships with your potential clients, which is really the main goal. This kind of gated content is really awesome for you guys too because if somebody is downloading a, a report on car accident claims in Alaska, chances are they need that more in-depth information because they've been involved in a car accident in Alaska and need to know what to do about it. So once you have that, that information from them, their name, their email address, their phone number, whatever you're requesting, and they have the information from you, you know you've got a really hot lead there and that's somebody that you should follow up with as soon as you can because chances are they're legitimately ready to start working with an attorney. Right. Exactly. Um, so following up on the book conversation, we have drip campaigns and those are automated email campaigns that are sent out in intervals after someone filled out a contact form or requested a book or an offer on your site. So these emails can address common questions, prepare the, the contact for what to expect, or even just remind them that you're ready to help them. Um, so on the screen you'll see a sample of three email campaigns for a book that was titled Seven Costly Mistakes That Can Ruin Your Social Security Disability Claim. The first email was subject line was Simple Mistakes Can Ruin Your Disability Claim. The email includes a thank you for downloading the book and a kind of an overview of what they'll learn after, as they read through the book. And it also contains a call to action and a link to another book offer related to this one, just in case they want more information. Um, 
The second email, don't wait to apply for Social Security benefits. In this email, they're touching base with the contact, letting them know what, that waiting too long to file a claim could be a costly mistake. And the real goal of this email is to create a sense of urgency, pushing them to contact the firm. The third email is representing yourself can be a big mistake at this point. You know, you've waited for a few days and they could be contemplating representing themselves. Doing a, it, they're explaining how their law firm can help the client through the Social Security Disability Application process. It also reminds them that the firm's still here to help if they've forgotten. Um, you just want to be sure that you remain top of mind for them. And that's really what the DRIP campaign is. It's not to annoy them or bombard them with emails, but really just to give them simple reminders that you are here for them and that, um, and that you can help them with their problems. They really shouldn't have to work through it alone. And we use um, DRIP campaigns quite frequently. I know Molly could probably talk about it for days, <laughs> but they are quite beneficial for us and we, uh, like I said, use them quite often. It's definitely good for, like, for example, right now, I'm in the process of buying a house, and one of the things that I'm looking at is getting storm windows because it's a historic home, and we need the storm windows to kind of keep in the heat in the winter. Um, so I, I was doing a little bit of initial research, reached out to a few people, and now I'm getting tons of information about that, reminding me, like, okay, yeah, I really need to make a decision about this and move forward with this. So it can be really effective, especially if people are doing that kind of initial research and trying to identify who they want to work with. Right. So next we'll talk about email newsletters. And um, they're a great, great way, again, to just sort of let your personality shine through and let your readers know what's going on with your firm or what's going on. <clears throat> with the legalities of your practice areas. Um, they can keep your contacts informed and offer a, a variety of content to appeal to your audience. Typically, they're sent out on an ongoing basis, and your contacts can choose to subscribe or unsubscribe, so you don't have to worry about annoying someone. They have the option to unsubscribe from your, from your newsletter. Um, a good newsletter usually has, has quite a range of content reaching from frequently asked questions to helpful tips and even announcements for your firm if you hire someone new, introducing them to your readers. Um, typically, we like to aim for a few short articles with some graphics or images to break up the text in a friendly informal tone. Um, and with newsletters, you don't want all of the work to be on one person in your firm. Uh, you can consider breaking up the task of writing among several people in your office. Um, and you want to be sure that your layout seems professional and clean, even if it's simple. Um, so you could have from the desk of and have your lead attorney, and they can write a little article just discussing something general each month so, they, so your readers can actually hear from, from the attorney they worked with. So I'll just give you some examples of what you could include, what we include in some of the newsletters that we write. Um, a calendar of events for things going on in the community. You can let them know what's going on in your firm, team member highlights, cases you're working on or case results, things in the news like defective hip implants or drugs, or seasonal articles like driving in winter weather. It's really just something to reach out to them, kind of let them know what you're doing in the community and just the big things that are going on in your world. Um, in terms of how often to send a newsletter, we're asked that question quite a bit. And you really want to consider monthly or quarterly. Um, usually it's just enough to remind your readers and potential clients that you are around and active. But you don't want to send it so often that you be they become frustrated because they're getting too much correspondence from you and immediately delete it. <clears throat> we suggest starting with a quarterly newsletter until you get the hang of the process. Um, and you want to be sure to choose your frequency and stick to it. Consistency is key. You really want your readers to know when they should expect to receive your newsletter, and hopefully they'll be looking forward to it. So I know I gave you kind of a quick run through of all this content, but um, I think it'll be helpful in, in what we're going to discuss next, which is mapping out your strategy. And to map out a content strategy, you want to choose one or more topics to focus on each month. You want to list the individual pieces that will support your topic. 
Determine when this content will be published on your site. And decide when the content will be shared on social media. And lastly, you want to create a content calendar containing all of this information to keep yourself organized and to help everyone else on your team understand the goal and what you're doing. We suggest starting with a three-month plan so you can start small, map out what you think you can commit to. If you think it's feasible to create three pieces of well-written content each month, then start there and you can grow from that. Um, so just an example for how to map for mapping this out. If the first month of your strategy is focused on DUIs, you could plan a library article about drunk driving accident lawsuits, a blog about how alcohol affects the driver, and an FAQ answering what should I do if I've been injured in an accident caused by a drunk driver. And this will give you just a focus and make sure that you're also supporting your practice areas by adding content to them on a regular basis. So I mentioned the content calendar, and here's an example of one. Um, it includes the focus for each month, the article type, the topic for each article, and the posting dates for each of those. And again, this allows everyone on your team to be aware of what you're doing and what you're focusing on. And it also helps you stay organized because you have a plan. So you're not waiting until the last minute every month and then realizing you need to crank out three articles. If you're planning in advance, you're likelihood of your articles being well thought out, well planned, and high quality are much higher. Um, and this, like I said, is just an example calendar. You can expand upon it to include who will be writing each piece. And the link to the page after it's been posted, you'll so have a running list of the content you've created where, again, if there are changes to the law or changes to what you've written about, you can go back and update it, keeping that content fresh instead of just overlaying it with more and more content about the same thing with those changes. Um, and this has been a total game changer for us to have this content calendar. It's so useful and when we're marketing or when we're writing emails, we have something that we can quickly go back and reference and see what topic we want to be talking about and what sort of message we want to be sending in that month. And it really keeps us organized and focused. Absolutely, and it's really helped us to streamline our content creation process, which is a huge benefit in our opinion. Um, keeping it all streamlined and organized will really help you be more successful and help you stick to the habit of writing content on a regular basis. So now that you have your content strategy mapped out, you want to make sure that your content is satisfying the needs of your users. <clears throat> so it really is a myth that you can write to satisfy every user. In a sense, what's good for all is good for none. So you want to be sure you're writing again directly for your perfect client. If you don't want small accident injury cases, but you do want major cases, don't write about recoveries of paying for small accidents. This conveys the message that you handle smaller cases and you'll likely spend most of your time turning down the wrong client instead of bringing on your perfect client. One of the best ways to create content your audience wants is to answer the questions your clients and potential clients always ask. And I know I've said that a few times, but it really is a great way to start writing. Um, if those are the questions you're always getting and, is, and you're getting them from your perfect clients, then you know those are the questions you should be answering. You want to, again, speak from a place of authority and hit on topics you know they're concerned about. What keeps them up at night? If they're always worrying about these things at night and searching on the web and they find you and you seem to always have the answers to their questions. They feel like they, you know them and you truly understand what they're going through. You also want to be sure that you're not writing content that's just trying to sell something. Readers are far more likely to stay on your site if your message is focused on providing them with solid information and advice instead of focusing on getting them to call you. <clears throat> Next, you want to be sure that you're writing content you would want to read. You want to make sure it's original. If you're just paraphrasing others from other websites, it's really not original content with a fresh perspective. They can find that anywhere. You want to make it interesting, provide meaningful details and insightful analysis. So add your unique spin and add value to your piece by letting your personality shine through. Um, be sure you write in layman's terms, using a lot of jargon will really confuse them and could lead them to search elsewhere for the answers they need that are more understandable. 
You also want to avoid keyword stuffing and multiple calls to action again. You don't want to continue to ask them to call you. You want to provide them with information that's helpful. And if the information is helpful to them by default, they will most likely call you. Um, and last but certainly not least, you want to be sure to read, edit, and revise before you publish. Uh, errors within your content can really reduce your credibility among your readers. That's something we want to stay away from for obvious reasons. So here are just some sample articles, and I assume that Molly, this will be on the site for them to review, but these are some good articles that we pulled together just to sort of give you an idea of what we consider good content to be. Um, and hopefully it'll help you with your writing in, the, in your writing process to be able to see some examples and kind of just get your ideas from that. And that's all I have. So if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. And I hope what I gave you wasn't overwhelming, but if you do feel overwhelmed and you have additional questions, you can absolutely email us or give us a call anytime. We'll be happy to walk you through them. Yeah, and this is a lot of information, I realize, but it's also really great kind of information to help you get on the right path for creating more effective content. I think a lot of us get bogged down by the idea of, oh my gosh, I need to write content that we don't actually focus and strategize and make sure the content is providing that really good information that kind of leads down to more information that creates a complete picture. So we think, well, I've got to jam everything I possibly can about plantar fasciitis or car accidents into one post, and we miss the opportunity to um, provide them just just the details that they're looking for and guide them to more information should they need it. Um, but this is really great, and thank you so much for your help today, Lindsay. Of course, I'm always happy to help out and to answer questions. I know content seems to be a bit of a mythical beast, and so we really want to try to help everyone understand it and um, just find a way to write what really resonates with their clients. Yeah, and I'll be sure to include the sample links that you sent or that you have on this uh, presentation. I'll be sure to include those in the webinar follow-up. So if you guys are interested in seeing more about that, then you will have that information um, by tomorrow. But it looks like we don't have any questions right now. So with that, I'm going to wish you guys a happy Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks again, Lindsay, for joining us. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye, guys.